Demand is heating up for U.S.-made solar products as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. Innovation in EV charging stations is revealed, and several states this week have announced um, legislation that is promoting uh, renewable energy. Well, I'm Jay Warmke with Blue Rock Station, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of February 6th. Well, Duke Energy has announced that uh, they've done a study of about 210 um, coal-powered plants in the United States, and they found that it costs twice as much to operate existing coal power plants for the fuel and the maintenance of these facilities as it does to build new solar power plants of equivalent generating capacity. Uh, as a result uh, of this, many of the coal power plants are being closed down in the U.S. EIA, the Energy Information Administration, has announced that about 27% of all of the coal generating capacity that exists today is going to be retired over the next six years. This is in addition to the fact that over the last decade or so, more than 40% of the existing coal power plants have already been shut down. First Solar has announced they're going to be investing about $4 billion in increased capacity to manufacture their solar panels. Uh, primarily, this capacity is in the state of Ohio, where they have three manufacturing facilities, but they will be opening a fourth facility down in Alabama. Now, these um, panels are generally sold to utility-scale projects. Uh, First Energy is the largest manufacturer of solar panels in the United States, founded in 1999. Now, the reason for this investment is they've also announced that their production inventory has been sold out actually through... Uh, 2026. So if you ordered today, you wouldn't get delivery of your solar panels until 2027. Uh, another example of how domestic manufacturing capacity is being stressed largely because of the incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act, REC Silicon announced that they're reopening um, the silicon manufacturing facility that was closed down at Moses Lake uh, Washington closed down in, in 2019 because it couldn't compete with the low cost products from China, largely being manufactured in the Uyghur area um, using forced labor. Uh, now they have reopened and immediately they announced that Hanwha has said they're going to buy the next 10 years of production capacity from this facility. The power purchase agreement prices uh, for wind and solar have seen dramatic increases in recent years, largely due to supply chain issues. Uh, there's also been the higher cost of fossil fuel, which they compete against, and issues with interconnection. In the fourth quarter of 2022, we did see a, a reduction actually of 1.9% for wind power purchase agreements, but solar increases continued. In fact, for 2022, we saw increases for solar power purchase. That's the uh, energy that's purchased by utilities or companies from large developers, increased about 33% in 2022 over 2021. Now, the CEA, the Solar Energy Industries Association, has announced that they feel that the IRS is not going to meet their February 13th deadline to give guidance as to how the Inflation Reduction Act um, tax benefits can actually be utilized. What are, what are the rules uh, that are going to be governing this? They've put that um, announcement, they feel it won't be until the second quarter of this year, telling companies how they can comply, uh, which, of course, is well beyond tax time. That could prove to be a problem. Uh, ChargePoint has announced that they are working with an electric um, uh, battery company called STEM to provide storage with EV charging for these systems along the highway. So basically, they'll charge the batteries and then from the batteries charge the electric vehicles. This is does, um, this system is to lower the costs of charging that's associated with it. Um, it increases resiliency. It's not uh, the 
based on the vagaries of whether the grid is available or not. It will lower demand charges, and it will also prevent any future utility pricing changes from impacting how these systems will, will function, the economics of them. Hot Springs, North Carolina is now a test microgrid. Uh, Duke Energy announced the entire city or village of, of Hot Springs. Um, now, Hot Springs is located near Asheville, North Carolina, has a population of little, uh, less than 1,000 people. But they have installed 2 megawatts of solar and about 4.5 megawatts of battery backup. So the entire city can act as a standalone microgrid. This will help not only in power outages, where the village will have four hours of battery backup, but it will allow Duke Energy to um, process power through this system to reduce uh, voltage and, and frequency uh, disruptions within the power grid and manage peak load demand for those customers at Hot Springs, but also a dis, uh, customers outside of Hot Springs. And Illinois has passed recently a law uh, that will prohibit local entities, local counties, cities, governments from arbitrarily banning solar and wind um, systems. Now, that has increasingly become a problem when local um, protests cause local agencies to, uh, to put the kibosh on these kind of projects. And Minnesota has announced that they are going to be 100% clean energy by the year 2040. Now, they are joining 10 states. Uh, these states are Washington, Oregon, California, New Mexico, Illinois, um, New York, Massachusetts, Virginia, and Hawaii uh, w that already have pledges of 100%. And there are nine additional states that are considering similar legislation. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.